Hi, welcome back to Out Review, a new episode of Bike Review. And today we have the brand new 2019 Honda X ADV, Cross ADV, whatever you want to call it. Um, the maxi scooter, motorcycle, Twitter, whatever you can say, because it's half motorcycle, half scooter. Uh, we have a chain, we don't have a Veromatic uh, like in the usual scooters and we have obviously a much bigger engine, a 745cc engine producing 54.8 horsepower at 6250 rpm maximum torque 68 newton meters at 4750 rpm 0 to 100 and top speed I can't tell you because I had no information whatsoever I couldn't find anything online um, if you own a X ADV or you know it please put it in the comments below we have a weight fully uh, filled up of 238 kilogram, which is quite a lot. You can add another 177 kilo on top for driver, passenger and obviously equipment that you take uh, with you. What else can I tell you? This is obviously a new kind of class. It's uh, off-road scooter motorcycle mix that didn't exist before. Uh, no one knew that we need it, but obviously uh, people are buying it and therefore it's working and it's pretty fun to drive. Now we have 17 inch wheel in the front, 15 inch in the back. We have 296 millimeter dual brakes in the front with ABS and a 240 millimeter in the back. 152.5 millimeters of suspension in the front and 150 in the back. And now we have different modes of driving. So we have uh, a dual clutch transmission with six uh, gears which you can either leave by yourself and let the automatic do everything itself or you can switch into manual mode and then you can shift up on the top and down on the bottom. Uh, you can leave it in automatic and have it in drive or in sport. Sport you can actually tweak it in three different settings where it actually, the only difference it does is the transmission where it basically revs higher and revs longer uh, and obviously it's a little bit more agile let's say. Um, kill switch electric starter then traction control two settings which you can set here uh, hazard lights horn uh, passing lights and blinkers then we have the protection for the hands which are stuck come stuck in it we have the windshield in the front which you can adjust in five settings as you can see here highest and lowest we put it on the lowest because it's very warm today uh, bled headlights which awesome which are really really great i drove the last two nights at one o'clock in the morning uh, home and it was really really good though the high beam doesn't much difference between the high beam and the low beam it's basically just extends a little bit towards the sky let's say then led blinkers led rear light uh, which is all great additional feature that we have here built is the uh, protection on the right and left in case you basically in the scooter falls down and this additional foot pads here for off-road driving. The one for the Siltis are in the back here. Uh, we have a manual handbrake in case you put it on the side stand so it doesn't roll away or you put it on the main stand as you can see here. And we have a keyless go. You can see the key, um, where is the key? This basically just needs to be in the pocket. You don't need to put it anywhere in. It's just the Honda standard uh, that we have at the moment. Uh, to open the seat, you have it here. Unfortunately, this is one negative point. It's only 21 liters of storage space. We have a 12 foot power socket and a uh, light here. However, it's way too small for a full size helmet. It only fits uh, open helmet, which is obviously not ideal. Um, then the fuel cap here, 13.1 liters. And I had tested fuel consumption of 3.8 liters on 100 kilometers. And I managed 275, close to 275 kilometers with one fuel tank. Honda claims you can get to 300 approximately. Then one thing I really like is uh, the LCD dashboard, which gives you all information, uh, trip A, trip B, uh, date, time, uh, air temperature outside, we have 30, 40 degrees now, oh my God. Uh, average fuel consumption, fuel gauge, uh, RPM and speedo. And then we have obviously which mode you're in, if you drive or manual or sport. And then we have another button here on the bottom, which is the G button, which basically does, or what it does is when you're driving off-road, uh, it basically limits the power to the rear wheel. So when it basically slips, it breaks it and uh, you still put power down on the road and you can accelerate, which is a great feature. Uh, it's basically like a third traction control in addition to the two settings that we have here. A little uh, additional display for key, ABS, parking, engaged and neutral gear. Every time you start it up, it's always in neutral. Uh, one more thing, uh, seat height is very high, it's 820 millimeters, 
so it's not so easy to get on. If you use it like this, it's okay, but look at me, I'm 184 tall, I'm barely touching the floor. Obviously, I'm not on the uh, main stand, but it's still the same when I'm basically down. And uh, last but not least, let's start it up and hear how it sounds. Not bad, I would say. It sounds really, really good. Okay, uh, prices in Switzerland, 13,180 Swiss francs, 900 Swiss francs offer at the moment. And uh, I would like to thank GL Moto who provided this scooter Moto form to me. Uh, they're located in Unterseen and you'll find a link in the description in case you'd like to buy one of these or any other Honda or new, which is the electro scooter brand, which I tested on top here. Uh, competition for the X80V would be the T-Max, the internal Honda Integra, which I have never seen live in my life. Um, what else? The BMW C650 Sport, which we tested as well. You'll find a link on the top right. And that's pretty much it. Although it's actually a cross hybrid scooter motorcycle and there's no other manufacturer who makes something like this. So it's kind of unique in its own way. All right, so now we're gonna hit the road. Don't worry, I'm not driving like this. I just came here so I can record this because as I mentioned, it's 34 degrees and it's damn hot. So I'm just gonna change gear, put on a helmet and obviously full gear and then we're gonna go on the road and I tell you how it drives while, sorry, how it rides while we ride. And uh, I would appreciate if you subscribe, leave a thumbs up because it's a one man show here. I do everything myself. And obviously a thumbs up would be free of charge for you as well as a subscription in case you're interested in this content. And uh, now without further ado, let's hop on and get on the road. Enjoy. All right, now we're gonna drive. I'm all geared up. You see, um, X80V is ready to go. We drove a little part here for the German video already, and now we're gonna go back to uh, Interlaken, so it's the way to Lauterbrunnen. Actually, we can go to Lauterbrunnen a little bit further, and then we come back a little bit less talk and more driving. So, when you start the engine, it's always in neutral. Once you want to put the gear in, you put, just put it on D or on Sport. Uh, if you want to switch between the sports mode, you can only do it while standing, just keep it hold and then it switches to different modes. Uh, but once you're driving, you only can switch between drive and sport. Okay, let's go. How about we accelerate here? Uh, only 60, okay. Let's do it afterwards. That was 60. You can see it goes pretty quick. Yeah. However, the only difference between the different sport modes is uh, how long the gears are hold or how long uh, the transmission is holding the gears before it shifts up or down basically again. Uh, it's just more revs basically. Nothing changes to the suspension or anything, any other things. Okay. See, it's a pretty quick thing. Yeah. And it's 32 degrees hot today. The thing is, what I love about this thing is the sound it makes. Yeah, it's it's just awesome. Yeah, displacement 745 cc. Uh, you can't get better than that because I think this is the biggest scooter displacement you can get at the moment. Look, you can overtake in the shortest distance here. However, if you drive them basically straight lines uh, and corners that are not very sharp and you don't have to switch up and down, uh, I would just put it in drive because it's just more comfortable. Otherwise, it's a little bit too twitchy, you know. Suspension is super comfortable. Saddle is very comfortable. I drove it uh, last two days, 300 kilometers already, and uh, I have no pain whatsoever in my butt. Yeah, it's really comfortable. It's one of the most comfortable benches I have tested. Uh, in the last two, three, four years uh, since I'm riding and not since I'm riding, since I'm testing basic bikes and publishing the videos. Yeah. Now you can switch to manual, do like this, then you can switch here on the bottom and shift up again on that side. Put it in automatic, uh, put it in drive and let it do. So basically if you want to change gears yourself, you do it. If you don't want to do it, just put it in auto and 
the double clutch gearbox does its thing. Yeah? It's really great, I love it. The only thing is, oh, we were a little bit too fast. The only thing is, um, that in slower speeds, when it shifts, for example, when you drive a corner within the city and uh, it shifts while you're basically cornering from first to second, it kind of jerks a little bit and you feel it throughout the entire bike and uh, you hear it as well. It's very noticeable. You just have to get used to it. Um, could have been a little bit smoother in my opinion but it's not a deal breaker at all um, having the automatic function is just so much more comfortable especially when you're using it in the city however with close to 55 horsepower it's way over way too over um, it's overpowered basically for the city uh, uh, you don't need that power in the city and the, whole, the, the thing is as well that it's so large and so heavy it's not really joy in the city, I have to say. It's great for this kind of roads when you go somewhere up the mountains or long uh, highways. Um, that's great, but in a city, it's kind of a bodybuilder in a uh, in a glass house, you know. You can't really move. There's too much power and too much math mass uh, going around. Uh, where is that thing? Where? Oh, here we go. I'm gonna turn around because we don't want to go within inside the city okay so turn around how about we're gonna do a little acceleration test here no car behind put it in sport three two one go here we go 80 it's just so powerful really and the question is, where is it going to end? I mean, now we have this kind of scooter-ish thing, bike, that has 55 horsepower. So the question is, when are we going to go to like 70, 80, 90, or when are we going to get the 100 horsepower in a scooter? And do we need that, actually? Uh, by the way, we are in Lauterbrunnen here. Oh, that was Lauterbrunnen, and we're going now again towards Interlock in uh, Bern, in the canton of Bern in Switzerland, in case you're asking yourself. Now, price-wise, um, yeah, 13,180, even though we have the 900 off now, it's quite a lot, I have to say. And um, you can get really, really huge bikes for that already, 600cc, 700cc bikes, even a liter bike, um, with double the horsepower. But the question is, who is this for? I mean. Who buys an X80V or a scooter that costs 13,000? It's the same thing like with the T-Max from Yamaha or the BMW C650 Sport, uh, which you tested. I uh, just checked the video on the top right that I mentioned already. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure. I would love to drive this on a daily basis, though if I go for something like this, I could go for a bike already because the 21 liters of storage space is good but it's way too little for a scooter and actually it makes no sense to have basically a scooter with no storage because that's the whole purpose of a scooter not only the automatic but the storage uh, capacity and here we have nothing uh, if we compare it to the forza one to five or 300 test on the top right as well that one has so much more space uh, we have not tested the 300 yet, uh, it actually sold, I wanted to test it this week as well. Um, but the 125, and they are pretty much they're exactly the same uh, other than the engine, right? And the space there is so big under the seat, you can really move a lot of cargo, yeah? A lot of things. What I really like is the G mode, this there, which is the kind of off-road mode. So if you put it in G and then you have like un unpaved surface like something around here or go there and you have stones and gravel and stuff like this then it helps you accelerate actually we could try it out over there let me just see let's put it in okay so I can show it to you Oops. let's put it in G and then I accelerate you see it's full throttle 
basically once it has the grip it puts the power down if it's slippery it basically doesn't let you accelerate so it can't spin out it's basically like a safety feature and you can drive the whole time with it because if you're in a dry or good surface I'm gonna try it again in a moment on the tarmac it should give you actually all the power that you want uh, let's just check it here again there's a little bit dirt on the side but it's not a problem okay three two one let's go see here it doesn't do anything it's basically like an off-road traction control so your wheel doesn't spin out however you can adjust it as well manually here in the with this traction control um, or you just leave it in yeah so if you just give it to someone who's a beginner or something uh, that helps a lot so that the scooter doesn't go left right you know uh, great feature really good thing and if you want to take it off-road then it will help you for sure while off-roading other than that it's really a cool thing to, to ride it looks amazing I really like it um, some criticizing points is no illumination on the buttons in the night so because you have so many of them I mean if you have just a kill switch and the lights and the horn okay whatever but you have so many buttons here and so many functions um, I'm kind of disappointed that they don't have uh, illuminated uh, buttons here. In addition, there's no heated grips, there's no heated seat, there's no electric windshield adjustment like you have on the Forza, it's manual. And for a price tag of double the Forza, or even more, um, I would have expected that, to be honest. I mean, if you would put this in, so how much would they charge if you, if you, if you put all these things in? Like 15,000? Come on, it's too much already. And uh, again, I'm not quite sure who is the focus group of or potential buyer for the X, X80V because it's so expensive so it must be someone I reckon in the 40s 50s who has already a bike or had a bike maybe a big bike and got tired of you know shifting clutching and just said okay I don't want to have to scrap anymore I just want to ride uh, enjoy and if I feel like I want to shift then I can do it over the buttons here uh, so I assume this is that's the, the group that is buying the X80V because obviously you have to have a lot of cash to to, to spend uh, on a scooter, right? Even though it's kind of half a motorcycle. It's super comfortable, saddle is very comfortable, I have to say. Really, I drove over 300 kilometers. It's the most comfortable saddle ever. And you have so many possibilities to ride like this, put the feet back. Uh, with this additional foot pads, you can put it even further back. However, then you have it quite warm coming from that area where your calves are uh, which is good in the winter which is uh, not so good in the summer like this where you have 32 degrees um, but yeah overall very cool thing looks amazing you won't see many on the road uh, you'll have your fun with it um, however a little bit more maintenance as I mentioned because of the chain as it's not a closed variomatic like on a regular scooter and uh, yeah we're coming to the end of the video so i hope you enjoyed this short review and the video if you like it please give it a thumbs up uh, subscribe to the channel like it comment below and if you have any questions please feel free to ask i'll, I'll try to ask i'll try to answer them as good as possible and uh, i hope you enjoyed the scenery here and if you like to see more videos, just check out the other videos uh, either in the top right or just subscribe to the channel and search for the playlists for scooters, motorbikes or cars. Wish you a great day and thank you very much GL Moto once more for giving me the scooter to test and I wish you a great day. Cheers. Bye. Peace.